Why nothing will change for black America. This is your brother, brother C.C. Blackman. And today's conversation is about why nothing will ever change for black America unless we do this. You know, for years I've been saying that self-destruction is on cruise control in the black community, especially since the 70s. I was born in the middle 60s, so I'm qualified to say I've seen a steady decline in the life of black Americans. Not just the life of black Americans as it relates to economics and jobs and stuff like that, but in the way we feel about each other. And today, you can see every leading indicator of premature death, we seem to be the stars. Let's take a look at it. High blood pressure, heart disease, abortion, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, black on black violence, you name it. Everywhere you look, black people seem to be dying. But surprisingly, we seem to be very comfortable with this idea of premature death. We seem to be very, very comfortable going into that dark good night as a race in this country. If you look at the way we are reproducing in this country, it's clear that 50 years from now, we will not represent 13 or 14 percent of the U.S. population. We're simply not getting along well enough, black men and black women, to even call ourselves uh, a people that's even at the replacement level. And while that's happening for the rest of the country, the implications for us are actually more devastating because we don't have the wealth and resources that other groups have. When I was a kid, 80% of the black families were intact with father and mother present. Today, we're somewhere in the 20s. Our young people don't even see good examples of black love. We have whole generations of kids where many of them just are homosexualizing themselves. And you look at it and you realize that this is not really a choice. This is a direction given to us by people who really want to see the total destruction of the black race in America. And unfortunately, they've made us very comfortable with all this death. They've made us comfortable with all this death. The black community has been flooded with drugs. They attacked us with the AIDS. When I was a kid, it was all about heroin. Then we saw the crack come in. Then we saw the angel dust come in. And now God knows what it is. We've lost all kinds of standards. We become so criminally orientated within our own communities that we are scared to death of each other. There's been so much drug sales and so much acceptance of all kinds of criminality because people couldn't get a foothold in the economy because we put our whole survival on white folks. We never maintained the parallel economies that we had prior to the end, of, prior to the uh, civil rights movement. So what's going to happen? What's going to happen to black America? Do we have a future? I think we do, but we better wake up quick. In order for us to wake up, we have to rediscover what it was that get made us a people before. And that was caring about each other, loving each other, having a sense of respect for each other. You know, you look at those people on the Edmund Pettus Bridge who marched during the days of civil rights, all dressed up in suits and ties, demonstrating to the world that black people were people to be respected. When I was a kid, even the bums wore suits. Things have really changed. Today, Disrespect is the way we relate to each other. And that's designed to make sure we never have economy. When I was a kid, people said young, gifted, and black. We were pro-education. Today, we're anti-education. Everybody takes pride by putting their ignorance on display. Nobody wants to put their intelligence on display because today, like Joe Biden said, you ain't black if you're intelligent. This has got to stop. It's time for us to make a change. But you won't ever make that change until you can find that ember of pride, that ember of black self-respect. If you can't get it from studying your history of all the great black men and women who tried to advance the condition of black people, then look into your own families. Look into the struggles of your mothers and your fathers and your grandfathers. Look at what they had to put up with. Look at how they had to sacrifice so that you could have a better condition today. And remember, it's not just a material thing. We have to learn to love and respect each other again. But how can we do that when the only way we get to know each other is through the boob tube and through these negative movies and negative TV shows that constantly portray us in negative ways? 
you know, it was so funny to me when I saw the Black Lives Matter movement going on and I saw all these celebrities in Hollywood come out and act so offended that uh, or so on, they want to be so much on the front line fighting for black people against police discrimination. Yet these very people love to depict us in the worst ways. They love to be the catalyst of black on black self-hatred. They know what those movies do to us. They know what those TV shows do to us. They know what that negative ass music we listen to does to us. That's not even black music. That's not black music. What kind of culture can sustain itself with such negativity? It's our chance, black people, to wake up. This is a new age. This is the age of the African Renaissance time. Not only do we have to wake up, but around the world we need to wake up. We need to recognize that regardless of the differences we may have surrounding religion or national origin, the truth is black people still have the same old problems. We have to decide whether we're going to let white men run this world or Chinese men run this world and Indian men run this world without no say from what happens, uh, what happens to the world by black people. We got to shake off this old fantasy of black inferiority and start to let our natural genius demonstrate itself. The way we show the world that we're bringing is despite all the money, and I mean they have spent a fortune trying to induce us to hate ourselves and trying to make us give up our peoplehood, it's time for us to go in another direction. Start to educate yourself about who you really are in the world. Start studying the history of your people and their struggle. And then look and link that to the worldwide struggle of African people. It's time for us to make a change. This is your brother, brother C.C. Blackman here at African Renaissance on TV. Please like and subscribe. And thank you for listening.